So let's look at how the labor market diagram um, looks like once we introduce UI. <coughs> so let's focus on a diagram of the kind of baseline case. Um, so as usual, we'll have tightness. Um, so we'll have tightness on the y-axis, employment on the x-axis. So here, you know, we have a very simple setup in which we assume that the size of the labor force was just one, um, but we don't have to worry about that so that unemployment rates, level of unemployment are just the same, employment rate and uh, level of employment are just the same because we assume that the size of the labor force is just one. That's just for mathematical convenience here. So this is the size of the labor force. So here we have employment, <coughs> here we have tightness, all right. So um, what about the labor supply? Uh, so I mean, here we are in a uh, model that's just a one period model, meaning that initially everybody's unemployed, people and vacancies get together and um, you know, people find a job, produce, and that's the end, that's the end of the model. But nevertheless, you know, the labor supply, if we go back to the expression, you know, uh, here, um, the labor supply we saw was still increasing in tightness, starting at zero. Um, so the labor supply is going to look exactly like before. And now, except that one difference, that our policy of labor of uh, employment insurance enters also the expression for the labor supply because we know that UI affects search effort and then in turn, search effort affects the labor supply. Um, okay, so we have this. <coughs> what about the labor demand? Labor demand, again, also with a one period model, it has very much the same properties. Um, so it's going to look something like this. Here, labor demand depends on theta, and, and here, once again, it also depends on UI. Here, it's not because of search effort, um, unlike in the labor supply curve. Here, it's because UI may affect uh, wages that firms pay, especially through bargaining. Um, so, and then that, that could affect labor supply, labor demand. So, we have something like this. Um, nevertheless, you know, the equilibrium is given by the intersection of these two curves, as usual. Then you can read employment here. You have unemployment that's um, given exactly here, and then you can also find the labor market tightness as usual here. Okay, so essentially, you know, the diagram is exactly the same. The only two small differences are that UI may affect labor supply and it may affect um, labor demand. Okay, great. So that's uh, that's good. Um, that's pretty simple. Um, so now let's study the range of possible effects that a UI can have on labor market outcomes, uh, which is quite useful to understand a little bit what's going on. So, um, so there are many um, different possible cases, um, uh, you know, whether we assume that the wage responds to UI or, or not, that's already um, two possible cases. You'll have different um, possibilities also depending on the shape of the labor demand. So you know there are models in which um, the labor demand is horizontal, um, like the standard matching model with linear production function or the matching model with rigid wage. In the uh, matching model with job rationing, you know, which is a third generation of matching model that um, captures um, the, a possible lack of job in the labor market, the labor demand is downward sloping, so that's a whole new set of effects as well. Um, so there are, you know, there are many different um, possibilities. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll kind of 
um, go over these different possibilities one by one to see a little bit um, what, uh, what may happen here.